happiness, which is based on circumstances, which is based on a feeling too often we base our outlook, feelings, circumstances, financial situation, social status, grades, marital status, whether you can have children or not, whether you're black or white or yellow, pink, <laughs> we base our happiness on that. But we, who are called, who have heard, who have responded, who have said yes and have been justified and set free from the accusations of the devil, we now have something we call joy. But, just as there is a king's palace, and there is a table at which to sit with the king, Many times we come to the doorway of the king's palace. We pass through it once on the day of our salvation. We taste and see that the Lord is good. And then we dismiss ourselves. And we leave. And we return to standing at the gate or at the door. Even in some cases outside the gate. We need to enter. We need to sit. We need to remain there. Jesus is accused of, at one point in his ministry, casting out demons by the spirit of Beelzebul or the spirit of Satan. They accuse him of doing his miracles with the power of the evil one. And he stands up and defends himself as only Jesus could. But at one point he says, he who is not with me scatters. Let me read that. That's Luke 11. Verse 23. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Gather with me. Now I'm going to keep reading. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places. Seeking rest and finding none. It says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, this, this uh, unclean spirit, it finds the house swept and put in order. Ooh, then it goes and brings seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. Verse 26, chapter 11 of Luke. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So warning, Jesus is not going to hide anything from us. We live in a daily battle against, not flesh and blood, right? Mm -hmm. Against the principalities and the powers that we cannot see, but we know we're there. Just like your Wi-Fi signal. You know it's there, your catch, your catch J. You know it's there, you know it's not there. We know the devil is real. We know that the unclean spirits who do his work are real. And we know that he is a joy stealer. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal your joy. He comes to He comes to kill. He comes to Repeat after me, <laughs> John chapter 10, I do believe, he comes to steal, kill your joy, and destroy your joy. And in the process, kill you. We have to fight for joy. And that means we have to gather with him at the table. We have to abide in him, John 15. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. So stay with Jesus. Is my house today swept and put in order, but empty of Jesus? Let me repeat that question. Is my house...
maybe I'll give a, a short uh, resume <laughs> summary of, of what I've said. Uh, you've reinvented life is a life that is characterized by joy. Joy and more joy. And then some more joy. And then I forget to say joy. Christian life has to have joy or it's not the Christian life. In order to have the joy, you've got to have the abiding. Jesus at the beginning of his ministry says, follow me. At the end of his ministry, he says, abide in me. It's different. He's our master, yes, indeed. But he's also our savior and our shepherd, our justifier, as we heard earlier. He is also our friend. Okay? And he has also put himself in us and said, come, put yourself in me. Abide in me in me. Don't stand at the gates of the palace, the door of the palace, when you can come in and you can feast at the table with the king himself. And he says, don't get up and leave. At your peril, you get up and leave. Remain with me. Abide with me. Not just on the day that Jesus comes and, and sweeps you into his arms and says, you're mine, my long lost child. Here, let me put this robe on you. Let me put this ring on your finger. Let me sacrifice the fattened ram for you. This is your day. He wants you to have that day every day. That day you said yes to Jesus. That day you say yes to Jesus Maybe tomorrow, maybe today. Don't forget, he wants you to remain at his side. Beware of sweeping your house, putting it in order, and having it empty of Jesus tomorrow. Are we daily ready to gather with him? John 15 has that reminder that these things he gives us so that our joy may be full. Abide in my love, he says right before that. Before that, he says, abide in me. And then he gets real specific. He says, don't just abide in me. Remember, I am love. Abide in my love. You're not going to find love like my love. Stay in my love. Stay with me. Stay at the table. I'm the king. And you're my son and my daughter. I want you here. And your joy will be full. Are we daily ready to gather with him? Mindful that if we don't gather, we scatter. You serve one or another today or tomorrow. Or in five years once you've begun your career. Once you've gone back to the country maybe you come from. Either you're gathering with him or you're scattering. There's no compromise with Jesus, right? He will spit you out of his mouth if you are lukewarm. He would prefer you be cold as a stone in the winter. Here at Tangier. <laughs> it's cold for some of us who aren't from. I'm actually from the tropics, so this is cold. He doesn't like lukewarm. He knows cold he does not like lukewarm. He loves hot. He loves it when we're hot. He loves it when we gather with Him. He loves it when we abide with Him. He loves it when we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, as we heard earlier from, from uh, our brother, Alolo. Abiding means remaining, means staying with Him, by Him at His side, sitting with Him at the table. And it even means coming into Him into that presence, into the place that He has prepared for us. Don't stand at the door when you can come to the table and you can feast. Joy requires abiding. And the transformed life can't be transformed fully 
until the joy is tasted and seen and believed and held on to. First of all, we've got to do this daily. It's a fight. Best in the a.m., morning, before you get going with your day. It's good to, to connect. It's good to, to call upon God and to open His Word and to remember who He is and who you are, who you are in Christ, your identity. Do this daily. Do this especially in the morning. Do this number two with others. We need to do it together. Life is already lonely. Christian life was never meant to be lonely. You're meant to have the gentle shepherd at your side, God himself, and you are meant to have God's body around you with all the gifts being exercised. So gather often with others. Same goal, treasuring Christ together, pursuing the reinvented life together fighting together for joy, openly, in the light. We have to be honest when we don't have joy. Because any doctor will tell you, you have to diagnose the problem before you can move into the cure, into the place of health and well-being. We all want health. We want strength. We want vigor. We want to be strong for those around us. We